Hello everybody and welcome to Chess Diagnostics. So I think I'm going to be starting a go live at 5, uh, at least 5, I think, one hour before Eastern time. So I think I'm in Central time. Uh, I'm going to do go live at 5 and I'm basically going to be doing, eventually, I want to do an hour uh, live stream every day where the first 20 minutes would be uh, basically a puzzle that I would have posted the day before. Uh, but today I'm just going to talk about uh, the truth about chess improvement, uh, which is basically the point is that you can learn from any position. And I've heard somebody like Kramnik say that, you, you know, if you analyze bullets, you're a retard, something like that. Um, but I really think that you can basically learn from any position. Uh, hello, uh, Nebra. I see I have somebody here. All right, so... Uh, I'm just going to reiterate, this is going to be a live at 5, so I'm going to try to have a timed thing so that if people know, uh, you know, I'll be going live every day, it'll be easier to follow along. If they want to be there live, of course, I'm going to post anything. All right, so today I'm talking about the truth about chess improvement, and let's get into a position here. So the idea is that when you start looking at any chess position, what you want to do first is you want to apply your current knowledge. Now, I've been thinking about this currently uh, in terms of how can a player like Nakamura be beat all the time by Magnus Carlsen, and how come I get, or any player really, gets uh, certain p opponents that would otherwise be the same rating. Uh, they get these certain opponents that just beat them again and again, or have the opposite, where I'll play, you know, 2100 in bullets, but I'll beat them 10 games in a row. And the opposite, I'll play a 2100 and I'll get beat 10 games in a row. And I was really thinking about this, and I think it is basically you're getting specific positions that they know more about than you do. And that just reveals a weakness in your either knowledge or your analysis skills. And that's why uh, tactics puzzles, in a way, are so... Uh, are so uh, strong in terms of improving your chess is because first off you're thinking about it for yourself and then you turn around and you find the correct solution uh, or you can also make edits and even if you got the correct solution that doesn't mean that you didn't miss something so you should always look uh, over the lines that you checked so let's just do a puzzle here and see how we would do that all right so i have a puzzle up here uh, i'm going to try to I don't want to get this wrong, but... All right, uh, so first off, you want to look at all the forcing moves, obviously. Talked about that before. Um, let's see here. So it's trying to get my orientation here. You see that the queen's threatening that rook. There's a check. Check. So um, the first thing I'm looking at is this check here. Now, if the bishop comes back, the queen moves. The bishop comes back, you just take it. The queen moves. What other moves do you have? I'm not seeing anything necessarily. All right, so you don't want to make a move until you can get it. Now you could take here, but he might have some kind of check. Take there, threatening mate in one. Or, I guess, mate in two. All right, so this is really the work of chess, is just sitting there and thinking and applying your own thought process before. Now, this is also why, uh, I, I hate to say it, but I think watching just chess videos uh, is not really as effective learning as reading a book or, uh, play, you know, even just playing live or even just playing bullet, I would say. Sounds kind of crazy. Um, all right, let's go back here. Hello, Shankler. It looks like I got somebody here. Uh, all right, so I have, if anybody has any questions about what I'm saying, uh, of course I'm going live, so this isn't going to be as polished as my other videos. I'm hope, hoping to get better at it, uh, just, you know, talking off the cuff. Um, but I, in the future, I'm going to be doing a live at 5 where I post a uh, position the day before so hopefully people who go live can see it and think about it. Um, but also ask any questions if you have those too. All right, so uh, I'm just... As you can see, my roundabout analysis is not so clear because I've been playing a lot of bullet. 
All right, so let's try to do this systematically. Check here. So you go check there, the king moves. And you really should analyze without trying to move the pieces. Uh, but, all right, so there's also... Hmm. Check. Ah, I see, okay. So you check here, and then you check here. Not so simple or easy. And then you get this checkmate. Okay. All right, so what can we learn from this? Uh, obviously that took me a minute, check, and then you have that check. So the reason this was hard for me, and it's just a harder puzzle, is because when you check here, you have so many uh, piece contacts. You have the bishop can take, the knight can take, so you really have to check all these things. Now, as you can see, this is why chess is hard in a way, is because uh, even if you know some knowledge, you know, obviously you know that on this square, the bishop can take, the knight can take, and pattern recognition breaks down at a certain point where you just have to do the hard work of looking at every move. And, you, I mean, you see this even for uh, really strong players, you know, Magnus Carlsen, the top 10, they'll sit there and they'll think, and that's why they have this pattern recognition, but at a certain point, you just have to go through the hard work of analysis. So I would say the truth of chess improvement is take any position, literally any position, you play a bullet game, uh, of course, in bullet, you don't really apply your thought process, but if you do want to go back and look at the positions, you can say, you know, I really felt, even if it's, even if you had a half a second and you weren't sure about what to do, you could say, I didn't understand this position. Uh, you should take some time and think about it and try to figure out why it was more difficult for you. And really, that's the process uh, that leads to chess improvement. Uh, and it's not just a knowledge thing. It's not just where you learn something. It's also practicing your analysis skills. All right. So, uh, and I kind of do it in the back of my head when I'm talking. I'm, I'm trying to think it out loud, which I'm not necessarily the best at. Um, but as you can see, I eventually got it. So, queen check. The king goes over. Now, the other moves that I did consider was here, check. Um, obviously, the knight can take. Um, but I was thinking about something like check, so you should check those too. And obviously, if the um, if the king moves, you have this check here. Um, but it doesn't work because the knight can move back, and or the, the rook can move back, uh, which you could take. So check. And you'd have to see that this doesn't work because the knight's... Uh, the knight's covering that square, so you could just take. So the king has to move over, which simplifies your task. All right, let me check the stream here. Uh, do I play over the board? Uh, I am planning to play more over the board. Um, I feel like I'm playing about 2100, 2150 USCF, uh, maybe 2100 FIDE uh, currently. Uh, I got my blitz rating to about uh, 2250, 2300, um, which seems to be about uh, the people that I played uh, two years ago that were about 2200, 2300. Uh, I was keeping an even keel and they were about 2400 uh, blitz. So I do hope to just, you know, get my national master title. Uh, it's just playing over the board uh, has been difficult with COVID, as people know. But now things have opened up and. Uh, I'm going to try to play some uh, tournaments, but I've just been very busy with work. But uh, hopefully uh, things have been more stable so I can, uh, I can get into, you know, regularly streaming. So as soon as my work's done, I can just start streaming and at least get an hour in. Uh, but for now, I'm going to try to do live at 5. Again, I keep repeating in this video, so if anybody's watching, live at 5, uh, 5 p.m. Central Time, U.S., uh, I'm going to post a position, and then we'll get into either just playing Blitz. Uh, and also, if any of you have games, uh, send them to me on uh, on uh, Lee Chess. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to look up real quick. I should look up how to say, is it Lie Chess or Lee Chess? I keep getting confused. All right, I'll look that up later. All right, so let's do one more position. Let me... See here, view tab, okay. Success. Okay, so an end game. 
Now, the good thing about pawn endings is that it's pure calculation, but that's also the bad thing. Uh, so they're actually really, really tactical, these kind of positions. Uh, they require long, long calculations. All right, so you can see that, uh, it, okay, we're black. We have one less pawn. So let's go through the analysis of a position. What you want to do is you want to look at the general factors, especially if you're coming at it as a puzzle. Um, if you're in a game, you know, from the previous move, you kind of have a line of, of what you've been doing, so you have a previous understanding. But you should still always start with saying, what is the position on the board? Let's evaluate the overall position. So in this position, it uh, looks like white uh, is trying to push his pawn, and he has more pawns, but you actually have an outside pass pawn, which from your general understanding, that would lead you to believe that you might have a win winning position. Because if you can stop uh, white's pawn, and you can basically... Uh, get white's king all the way over here, then you can come over, collect this pawn as well, and win this pawn, and you just have to calculate if that all works in time. All right, so the first thing you'd want, look, you'd want to look at is pawn takes there, um, or something like pawn here, but of course, if you go pawn to a5, uh, he could just take, and one, two, three, all right, so he would get a queen, uh, so you have to do this, this counting, which it's somewhat simpler in endings, uh, which is a good practice, uh, but you know you have to use your general understanding in concert with this calculation. So what exactly is analysis? Now, analysis is applying, my definition at least, is applying your current understanding and knowledge to a position. Now, this is why you can have players who are the same rating uh, get crushed by another player. They, they just get in a position where their knowledge is not up to a par as their opponent. And that's the beautiful thing about playing chess is that you're always getting, either you're teaching somebody or you're getting exposed what you do or don't know. Uh, so in this in this end game, I I would say I'm actually pretty even at end games, um, even though I haven't studied them a lot, uh, just because I've gotten in a lot of end games playing over the board and in bullet as well. I seem to be able to kind of uh, wing my way through it, but I'm trying to increase my overall understanding by studying uh, Dvoretsky's end game manual, and I'm going to be getting back into finishing my end game course as well, which I think I had about 30 videos. All right, let me uh, look at who's on stream here all right no questions yet so let's see if we can finish this so takes takes that would be the most logical thing you don't want to play something like here because then that creates a weakness and it locks your own pawn up but if you take then that leaves you at the outside pass pawn so i would just say that would be the first move all right uh, so that's not, I didn't totally calculate it through, which in an over, over the board game, I definitely should. Um, now the next move could be something like, uh, calculating this pawn push. So let's say now there's a rule of the square, um, which I saw a funny, kind of funny video. I think it was the rule of the square, Magnus Carlson. So the rule of the square is basically you just, uh, you can calculate quickly on how, how fast you're going to reach there. So the problem is, uh, if you look at their if you look at me moving this pawn forward, what you do is you look at here and then you go over and you can see that the king is inside this square here. So uh, from a5 to a1 and then from uh, e5 to e1, that's the square. If the king is in it, then he's going to stop your pawn. Uh, but you could start pushing and if he pushes, you go king to e6. Uh, I mean, but if you push a c6 and then you stop that pawn... Uh, so let's let's calculate. The, the problem here in this position is that white has one extra pawn. So if you push a5, he pushes c6, uh, you could go back. You don't want to go to uh, e5 because then you're, you're out of the square of uh, white's pawn. So you push, he pushes, you go to e6, he pushes c7, you go to king to d7. Um, and then if he has to rush over, then you'll be able to get... Hopefully, the idea is get this uh, f3 pawn. So let's see if that works here. <laughs> All right, obviously that's not the right idea. Uh, so let's let's see what happens here. So am I supposed to bring the king in? Okay, well, I guess you could start with e5 first because you still get there. 
All right, so let's see where I missed this. All right, so why doesn't, oh, let's see. So why doesn't, uh, all right, we're gonna play this against the computer. Oh, oh, that's brutal. Oh, I see. <laughs> All right, so basically if I push a5 instead of moving the king, then he just starts pushing these two pawns and... Yeah, okay. So even if I get this one, he's going to push and support the other pawn with his king and not even chase this pawn. Yeah, okay. So it was imperative to get in front of the king, opposition, and then you can go over and take this. All right, he doesn't even go, a human wouldn't, a human would go after the pawn, but all right. This is why end games are so hard. Um, and as you can see, <laughs> calculation can be hard in an end game because there's so many ideas as well. So I miss the idea of the king uh, supporting the other pawn and just completely ignoring my pawn, as you can see from my analysis. So that's something that I should be working on, is making sure that, uh, especially in an endgame, if your opponent can just ignore your idea, you always want to double check. Because sometimes, you, as you can see, uh, I got, I got uh, completely blindsided by the idea of he has to go uh, stop my a5 pawn. Uh, but the tempos work out where probably by one move. Actually, let's go Let's go here. So, uh, let's see. So if I push that, he plays there. I go back. All right. I stop it. He, yeah, so basically, if I go after this pawn, I go after this pawn, he pushes. Yeah, so he's basically going to get by one move. All right, uh, I 
think I'm just going to finish this up for today. Uh, this stream just went down, so uh, I'm going to be uh, streaming at 5 central time every day, and I'll see you tomorrow.